Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today we are looking at another hidden collection reveal. Looks like Konami just wants to go on this train of revealing something every single day for this new pack in the OCG. It's really cool. It's it's nothing but new legacy support for all of the main archetypes in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, like literally all the main character uh, archetypes. And there's it's been a lot of cool stuff here. Um, today we get a new Stardust uh, monster. Looks really cool when you zoom in on it. Um, it's kind of like Stardust, like in the middle of an attack. It's pretty cool. The name of this bad mamma jamma is Ax Ax <laughs> Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. Very cool. I actually think this card has legit applications. We'll look at those. I even went through and looked at a couple of specific cards that will pair with this quite nicely. So here we go. Uh, Excel Stardust Synchro Dragon. Um, is a level eight wind dragon of course 25 2000 for the stats and it's completely generic so everything up to this point is exactly the same as regular stardust remember regular stardust is exactly a level eight uh which will come up here in the effects so uh this card is two once return effects the first one reads if this card is synchro summoned you can special summon a level two or lower tuner from your graveyard Ooh -hoo! that's pretty good um especially considering uh Hauke fibrax already like by himself gets you into uh, i believe at bare minimum even if you just like i think if you only play um uh, don't quote me on this i thought like uh i, th I learned this a while ago and now I'm, I'm questioning myself on it but i'm pretty sure it's like if all you play is a despot zero zero one you can at least get to a synchro eight and a, a herald of the arc light off of just playing him and then if you play some of the higher ceiling stuff you can go even further don't quote me on that that's what i that's think that's what i think but whatever anyway um that's really good it doesn't even negate the tuner's effects it just gets a reborn for it most of the time even to get to this guy or in a lot of lines of play you would have already gone through a level two or lower tuner uh there it's really cool his other effect though during the main phase as a quick effect you can tribute this card as cost to special summon one stardust dragon from your extra deck this is treated as a synchro summon then immediately after this effect resolves synchro summon using monsters you control as material this turn that synchro monster is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects insanely strong um really really cool um it, it's it doesn't need to trigger on something it's just during the main phase really cool really flexible you're summoning a level one or two tuner anyway that can jump with this card and a stardust dragon into a nine or a ten and we're going to take a look at those in just a second here so let's see so obviously if we're looking at the tens Baron de floor has to be something you consider this becomes Woo! you could have easily made this already um versus your opponent uh beforehand like if you just made this new stardust revived a level two tuner and then just went directly into flur you could have done that already got the omni negate i guess the bonus here is like if you play other stuff this gives you the opportunity to see what your opponent's playing see how they start their turn and then you can kind of like work your way into that the only downside here is that if your opponent does shotgun something like a dark ruler or a droplet they are just going to blank this card and it's not going to get a chance to tag out so that's that's definitely what you're scared of or like a kaiju or a lava golem some decks have been looking at that kind of stuff so definitely just be aware of that but um yeah being able to go barone uh, which and then maybe have that protection effect where it's literally unaffected by all activated effects that turn is kind of huge it means your opponent has to summon something bigger than 3000 to walk over it otherwise it's negate is live and of course on the next turn you get that free pop and like potential follow-up which is really really good so um that's one of your better options i think probably the best option though is satellite warrior the synergy here is like insane so satellite warrior already requires a tuner and a non-tuner synchro which is exactly stardust you're going to summon the stardust and you use your level two to go into this um then um if this card is synchro summon you target cards your opponent controls up to the number of synchro monsters in your grave destroy them that's probably at least it's at least two right because it's going to be the stardust you summoned and the this one the synchro uh charge one that you just used anyway so it's going to be popping at least two cards but if you did a halk line or something then it's actually going to be more than that so really really strong obviously that is insane it's popping two to three cards uh he's unaffected by activated card effects so even once you summon him you can't be chaloused you can't be impermed or whatever you can't be any of those quick chain negates like they don't do anything to you 
uh, which is really good. He can't even be striked unless they... Uh, they can't strike the summon, actually, because he's, he'd be summoned off of an activated effect, not um, uh, not an inherent summon. So really good. I know that word isn't popular. But the other really cool thing with this card is when he pops cards with this effect, he actually gains a permanent 1,000 attack for every card destroyed. So if you pop two cards, he's going to 4,500. If you pop three, he's going to 5,500. And he's staying with that uh, unaffected clause until the end of the turn. So your opponent, like maybe their only out would be, like we said, a very specific, like draw something like a Kaiju, a Lava Golem while you have something else on the field. Or they have to make access code and try to walk over you. And if you do, he even floats. And you know what he floats into? He floats into Stardust Synchro Monsters with different names in your graveyard. So you could summon back both of the Stardust Monsters you have in your grave if they try to walk over this guy. It's actually insane. And I love it because like normally you're just generically abusing this guy in the list that ever would use him. So you never get to use that effect. But in this situation, the only outs to him are like Kaijus or walking over him with an access code. And if they do, you're still getting at least two bodies back on the field, um, which is pretty cool. Ruddy Rose Dragon is the next option. Um, just being able to quick synchro this is really strong. It does get rid of your graveyard because when this card is summoned, it banishes all cards from the graveyard. So it is what it is. Um, you're not gonna get to wipe the board though. It's just gonna be that graveyard wipe, but still really strong, right? Um, and then obviously gives you that protection on field, which is really nice. It, it's a powerful card. It, it depends on the kind of deck you're playing, as long as you don't really care about what's in your grave after that point, then it's pretty good. But uh, yeah, it, it's an option. It's definitely one of the options to consider. And then there's Chen Ying. I think Chen Ying doesn't really make a ton of sense though, in my opinion. His effect doesn't really fire unless your opponent's gonna let you trigger it. Um, and he already has good protection. He pretty much just like already scares your opponent from ever trying to destroy him. And so, uh, I don't like making him completely unaffected isn't really doing a ton aside from the fact that like he does get he can get pretty big from like his his uh, buffed attack and defense so like that's the one thing you might be banking on but it's it's just fine to me like I'd rather have an interruption for sure uh, and then for the nines there's not a ton of options for nines there's just I mean hot red dragon arch fiend ex exists but um, unfortunately he needs a dark dragon synchro to make him and stardust is wind so it doesn't actually work that way uh, but crocker dragon's here uh, he's probably just drawing you one card but he's also kind of a dryden from hand so cool if you want to play that resource game where you think a dryden is a little bit better here and maybe you had to go through a level one engrave instead of uh, a level two it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, and then you have Shen Shen. Um, this one's good too. I mean, there's no no nothing wrong here. Um, being able to set up this this floodgate can be pretty insane. And a lot of decks like are just straight up going to lose to Shen Shen if they can't handle it. And they're almost never handling it in the battle phase because they can't even play far enough to get a monster big enough to walk over it. So if this is a Towers that's also applying its crazy floodgate effect, um, like I don't see a lot of those decks that lose this card anyway, clearing it that turn. And that's kind of setting you up for like an insanely powerful uh, crack back on the next turn. It's really good. So those are really the only two level nine options that I'd like. There's not a ton of interruptive options for level nines uh, synchro wise, but yeah, these are the biggest options I think for this card. I, I really like the applications here. I think like there's legit an argument for like, if you're going to do a Hauke Fibrax line and you would be going into a Borload Savage. Maybe there's an argument for going into this. I just think it could be the natural progression of Yu-Gi-Oh where this card lets you look at your opponent's first card they activate or first two or three cards, how they start their play lines. And once you see what they're playing, you're like, hmm, Barone but the Fleur is better in this matchup or uh, Satellite Warrior for multiple pops is better in this matchup. And then they get the bonus of becoming Towers, right? So I actually really like it. Um, I definitely think this could have legit applications. I think it's even good for like pure Stardust decks because obviously those decks are built around just turboing out these level eight monsters. And you know, this is some pretty legit payoff for that stuff. So I like it a lot. I think this is really cool. I think this and the Utopia have been like some of the best cards we've seen so far for the Hidden Collection. Hopefully they keep it moving. Hopefully they're like, it's, it's applicable cards, like actually decent cards. Maybe there's somewhat generic like this and, and the Utopia to be used in other strategies, but um, I'm liking where they're going. I think some of these cards have been really cool. So that's gonna do it from here today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know your thoughts on this card overall. And also let me know if there's any other weird applications that I didn't mention here. There definitely could be other stuff, but I think these are most of what you're gonna be looking at here. Just 
the fact that you're only reborning level one or level two tuners off of this card. Not that there couldn't be other play lines, but uh, that seems like the most likely, uh, these seem like the most likely cards you'd be wanting to use here, but really cool. Um, so let me know your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.